Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. Official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 150. 100 and day, day 3150. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in a third edition. Third edition, day 150. We are working on the practice test that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 368. And today we'll finish this section. We'll do question number 24 and 25. Question number 24, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's work on it. And as I said, today we'll finish this section. And tomorrow, on day number 151, we'll begin exam number 2. All right? It says that we have 20 bulbs. There are 20 bulbs in a box. We are told that two of those 20 bulbs, two are defective. Two of them are, let me rewrite this thing, two, more, two of them are defective. We are to select two bulbs simultaneously at the same time, at random of course. We are to select two bulbs simultaneously and at random. Question simply is, what are the odds that the bulbs that we select, the two bulbs that we select, what are the odds that neither is defective? What are the odds of selecting two non-defective bulbs simultaneously out of a box containing 20 bulbs? Let's find out, shall we? So, what are the odds? Well, the odds are very straightforward. So, we have, just like any other probability, if, if, if just like any other probability, if, if, there are, if, there are, if there are seven boys in the class of 10, uh, in the room full, full of 10 kids, seven boys and three girls, what are the odds of picking a boy? Well, we ask ourselves, how many different ways can we pick a boy? Seven. How many, different tot how many different ways are there totally to pick a one person? Ten, obviously. That's the same idea here. So the top, on the top, is simply going to be the number of ways, number of ways, number of ways, two non-defective, two non-defective bulbs, number of ways, two non-defective bulbs can be chosen can be chosen out of out of how many? That's the denominator. Out of how many? One more time, simple example. There are seven boys, three girls. If we were to pick one person at random, what are the odds that we pick a boy on the numerator? What are we going to put in the numerator? On the numerator we'll have how many different ways can we pick a boy? And on the denominator we'll have how many different how many total different ways are there to pick one person. How many different ways can we pick a boy? Same, the, the, the comparable concept on the top here is how many different ways two non-defective bulbs can be chosen out of how many non-defective ways? Out of 18. Because that's how many, that's how many non-defective bulbs are there in the box. Because two of them are defective. So that's the numerator. Just like there were seven boys, the seven would have gone on the top. How many different ways can we pick two non-defective bulbs out of 18? Because there are 18 of there are 18 non-defective bulbs out of 20. On the bottom would be the total number of ways, the number of ways, number of ways, two bulbs can be chosen out of, out of how many? Out of, out of a total of 20. We have total 20 bulbs. That's the fraction. This is a fraction, you see? This quantity, we're going to figure out what that quantity is over that quantity. And whatever that comes out to be, that's our answer. Let's look at it. We need the room, so we're going to erase this thing. First thing first, first thing first, we need to understand here first whether we are dealing with permutation or combination. So we're going to pick two bulbs simultaneously or, yes, two bulbs simultaneously. Does it matter whether we say, let's, let's pretend that they are numbered, Let's, suppose, let's pretend they are numbered. Does it matter that uh, if you tell me that you pick bulb, bulb, bulb number 7 and bulb number, bulb number 12, or if you tell me if you pick bulb number 12 and bulb number 7, does it matter? No, of course not. Order does not matter. It's just two bulbs. They are all identical. We are just picking, picking two bulbs out of 18 because there are 18 non-defective bulbs. Order does not matter here. Here, order, here, order does not matter. If the order does not matter, we are dealing with combination. This is a combination problem. 
this is the combination problem. So let's let's begin, shall we? So how many different ways are there? Number of ways two bulbs can two non-defective bulbs can be chosen out of 18. How many different ways can we choose the first bulb? Well, there are 18 of them. How many different ways can we choose the first bulb? I'm going to raise this now. Keep in mind it's a combination. Well, since there are 18 of them, there are 18 different ways we can choose the first non-defective bulb. After we have chosen the first non-defective bulb, how many different ways are there that we can choose the second non-defective bulb? Well, we have chosen one already. There are 17 ways of choosing a second, second non-defective bulb. Now, because the order does not matter, because the order does not matter, if we choose bulb A and then bulb D, we cannot count bulb D and bulb A as another possibility. Order does not matter. But as soon as we start picking a second bulb, as we have seen many, many times in the, in the previous videos, uh, that uh, when we start picking a second one, we start to double count. Double counting is not a problem when order does matter. When order does matter, then of course AD is one order and DA is another order. But when the order does not matter, we realize that when we start pick, picking a second thing, second object, second person, we begin to double count. How do we undo the double counting? We undo the double counting by taking half as many possibilities. So that's our numerator. That's our numerator right there. That's, that's, that's this part right there. Let's look at the denominator. By the way, before I forget, before I forget, I'm going to label this problem as I'm going to label this thing just so just so you know what to find here. Where can we put it here? Let's let's put it right here. This is permutation, permutation, and combination. And we have done 10, 10 videos uh, do, when we when we were solving the problems through the, through the entire book. Uh, we did a series of 10 videos on permutation and combination. Just search for them, and I label them as one of 10, two of 10, and so forth. I'm going to relabel them. We did one permutation, one problem dealing with permutation and combination in the previous section. I'm not going to waste time looking for it right now, but I'm going to label that as 11th one, and this one we're going to label as 12 of 12. So, so far there are a dozen, dozen lessons there, dozen problems dealing with permutation and combination. If we find more, which I'm sure we will in the second exam, then I'm going to have to come back and relabel them. But this is a permutation combination. Enough of the talk, let's, let's deal with this thing. How many different ways can we pick two balls out of 20? Well, that's very simple. How many different ways can we pick a first ball? There are 20 of them, so there are 20 different ways we can pick a first ball. How many different ways can we pick a second ball? But there are only 19 left. 19 ways. Well, of course, double counting is going on, and if you still don't know what I'm talking about, double counting, then you need to watch the, all of the videos and learn it. There is double counting going on. We need to undo the double counting. How do we undo the double counting? We just take half as many. That's it. I'm going to bring this down a little bit because it's too far up in the sky. 18 times 17 over 2 over 20 times 19 over 2. And that's our answer. That's our answer. We just have to work on it. We just have to work on it. So let's work on it together. Well, first thing first, this 20 is going to go away. Right? So now we are left with simply, so now we are simply left with 18, 18 times 17. I don't know if I need to rewrite it. So we're left with 18 times 17. We're left with 18 times 17 over 20 times 19. It was originally 18 times 17 over 2 over 20 times 19 over 2, which boils down to this thing because the 2 goes away. Let's work on this part now. 18 is going to go down with the 20. 20 is going to become 10 and it's going to 9. There you go. There is our answer. That's it. We are done. So here on the top we have 9 times 17, 9 times 17, which we'll figure out in a second. Let's do the bottom first. We have 10 times 19, 10 times 19 is 190. Let's find out what 9 times 17 is. Now, 10 times 17, so this, this quantity that we see here, this quantity that we see here, that's what this is. This, this quantity equals this. This is our numerator. The number of ways two non-defective bulk can be chosen out of 18, which is this one right here, and then number of ways, two bars can be chosen out of 20. 17 times 9 is what we're looking for, 17 times 10 is 170, 170 represents 10 17s, let's take away 117 from it. So that gives you 3, 6 minus 1 is 5, so it looks like 153. So the answer is 153 over 9. The answer is 153 over 9. That was one way of doing this problem.
There is, however, another way of choosing the other way we could have looked at this problem, another vantage point, which is this. See here, in the work that we see here, let's erase this top part because it's the work that we see here, this part that you see here is is the work that we just did where two bulbs, two bulbs were chosen. Simultaneously. Simultaneously, as the problem told us to do. Two bulbs were chosen simultaneously. That's what this work is about. However, we could have achieved the same job, we could have achieved the same task by choosing two bulbs, two bulbs, one at a time. Even though the problem tells us to do simultaneously at the same time, but we could have chosen two balls one at a time, but but without replacement. These two are the same thing. These two are the same exact thing. The reason they emphasize that choose them simultaneously is because they want to make sure that we don't have a chance of putting the first one back in. How can you put the first one back in if you're choosing two at the same time? But if that's what you are trying to prevent, if you are trying to prevent me put by putting, if you're trying to prevent me by putting the first one back in, well, simply tell me not to do it, and I won't do it, which is this part. So you can either you can either simply tell me what well, to choose two bulbs. You can choose one at a time if you want to. Just make sure you don't put back the first one. Don't put back the first one. Whatever you choose, don't put it back in. And if you do it that way, we can achieve the goal. So let's solve the problem now through this through this outlook. The answer, this outlook is here. This word that you see here is this thing. Now let's do this outlook again. Keep in mind the answer was 153 over 90. So, this is what we're going to do. Let's first set up the symbols so that we understand it, okay? Let's first set up the symbols here. It's very important. Understand it. So something like this would mean the odds of choosing odds of choosing a defective bulb. A defective bulb. Probability of choosing a defective bulb. D for defective. If you put a bar on the top of it, if you put a bar on top of it, that would represent the probability of choosing a non-defective bulb. With the bar on the top. Are you with me so far? And then if you go on and put a subscript of 1, if you put a subscript of 1, that will mean odds of choosing a non-defective bulb on the first try. On the first try. Are you with me? So that's that part. After we have chosen a non-defective bulb on the first try, now we want to find out what are the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb on the second try. And, this, and that's called given the fact that we have already chosen a non-defective bulb on the first try. So here, one more time, the second step, when we are choosing one bulb at a time, we have to do it in two steps. So first we ask ourselves, what are the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb? Well, the odds are this. This is how we represent it. After having chosen a non-defective bulb on the first try, then we ask ourselves, now, what are the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb again on the second try, given the fact that the first try yielded a non-defective bulb as well. And that is called conditional probability. And this is how we represent it. This is how it will be. The odds of choosing a non-defective bulb, you see, a non-defective bulb with a bar on the top, on the second try, given the fact that a non-defective bulb was chosen on the first try. Do you understand? And these two are independent events. These two are independent events. And therefore, the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb on the first try and the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb on the second try, if we multiply them together, we will have the odds of choosing the two non-defective bulbs out of 20. Let's do it together, shall we? Enough of the talk, let's do it together. So we have our symbols to put it together. I'm not going to erase all of this thing. Let's do it here, right here. So what we are looking for, 
what we are looking let's put this word bulb here so I have, so that we have more room so what we are looking for is what are the hours of choosing a defective bulb on the first try and then times the hours of choosing a non defective or rather non defective bulb not defective bulb what are the hours of choosing a non defective bulb you see non defective with the bar on the top non defective bulb right here and similarly bar on the top and bar on the top what are the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb on the first try? We can multiply that odd with the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb again on the second try, given the fact that a non-defective bulb was chosen on the first try. Let's begin, shall we? So what are the odds of choosing a non-defective bulb on the first try? Well, how many non-defective bulbs are there in the box? We, we are told that there were two of them are defective. There are a total of 20. If there are a total 20 and two of them are, we are told are defective, there must be 18 non-defective bulbs. Out of how many total? We just said it. 20. So that part was done. You with me so far? Now, having chosen a non-defective bulb on the first try, which is what this is, which is hence the conditional probability, that part is very important. This, this part is conditional on the fact that the non-defective bulb was chosen before. Having chosen a non-defective bulb on the first try, how many non-defective bulbs are left? But well, there are only 17 left. There are only 17 left. Out of how many? Well, out of 19. Out of 19. Because there are only 19 bulbs left now. Now let's see what that yields, shall we? So again, we're going to have divide by 2, we're going to get a 9, and we're going to get a 10. Just like before, just like before, the odds are 170, or rather, 10 times 19 is 190, and 9 times 17, even though we did it a second ago, I forgot. So let's do it together. We're going to do it together. Listen carefully as I speak, okay? Before we did it on the blackboard, but we didn't need to. I didn't need to do that. I did it for your benefit. So I'm just going to do it again one more time verbally. See if you can follow me. We're trying to figure out 9 times 17. We know 10 17s are 170. 10 17s are 170. If I subtract 20 from 70, I will get 150. But I don't want to subtract 20. I want to subtract a 17. Therefore, it's 153. Because if I subtract 117 from 10 17s, then what I will have left over are 9 17s, which is exactly what we want, 9 17. That's your, that's your answer. So we looked at it two different ways, and we both we get the same answer both ways. Obviously, we get the same answers both ways because the answer is not going to change. It's just a different outlook, different vantage point, different way of, different way of analyzing it. But it shouldn't yield a different answer. In case you're curious, the, the probability, or not the probability, rather, the percentile, oh, I'm surprised it's so low. Only 15% of people, only 15% of people who took the exam got this question right. 85% missed it when this question appeared in the real exam in the past. Because understand that all of these problems are real problems, all of them appeared in the real GRE in the past. And therefore they have the percentile, they know exactly how many people, what percentage of people got it right. 15%. Let's do the next one. Number, number 25. The very last one. It says, it says, what is the perimeter of a rectangle that is twenty four meter? wide and has the same area as on the rectangle. What's the parameter of a rectangle? We are told, question here is what's the parameter of a rectangle that we are told is 24 meter wide and has the area same as another rectangle that is that is 64 meter by 48 meters. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We need the room obviously, so we're gonna have to erase this thing. Just give me a quick break. So as of this video, one more time I'm reminding you, as of this video, 
the previous problem that I finished, I'm going to label it as 12th, 12th permutation combination problem out of a total, of ser total series of 12. I'm sure we'll come across at least one or two more in the next exam, in which case I'll come back and relabel them. Do you understand? That way, if you're looking for practice problem for permutation and combination, all you have to type in is permutation, combination, 7 of 12, and the seventh video in the series of 12 will pop right up in the search box. Do you understand? So, we know, we know that these two rectangles have the same area. How do you find area of a rectangle? Area of the rectangle is simply length times width. The first rectangle we know is 24 meter wide. 24 meter wide. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna write the I'm not gonna write the unit. You know they are all meters. They are all meters. So I'm not gonna worry about the units. It's 24 meters wide. It is it is the width that we have to first figure out. Or rather, width is 24 meter. It doesn't matter whether you call it the width or the length. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Width is 24 meters, it is the length that we have to figure out. It really doesn't matter what we call it. And we know the area of this triangle, area of this rectangle has to be same as, which means it's the area of this rectangle is same as this other rectangle, which we are told is 64 by 48, which means the area of this rectangle must equal the area of that rectangle. The area of this rectangle is simply 64 by 48. 64 by 48. Of course, these two, these two areas have to be equal. Area of the first rectangle has to equal to the area of the second rectangle. Why? Because the bloody thing says so. Let's simplify, shall we? Let's divide both sides by 24. If we divide both sides by 24, this 24 will go away and 48 will become 2. But that was very simple, which means the length was 64 times 2. 60 times 2 is 120 and 4 times 2 is 8, so it's 128. So that part is done. Now that, now that we have its length, we already know its width. We can figure out the perimeter, and the perimeter, perimeter, is simply perimeter. Let's call it letter P. Perimeter is simply two times length plus width. Two times length plus width. This is silly to write it out. Let's just write because otherwise it'll be too low. Perimeter is simply two times length plus width. Of course, if you have a rectangle, the perimeter is simply this length plus that length, two, two, length, two times length, and this width, and that width, so two times width. If you, if you like, you can even write it like that. It is simply two times the length plus two times the width, which is same as two times length plus width. Two times length, we know is 128. Width, we were told, is 24. 128 plus 24 128 plus 22 would have been 50 because 22, 2 and 8 will become 10 it would have been 50 so it's 152 so it's 2 times 152 150 times 2 would have been exactly 300 therefore 152 times 2 will be 304 304, 304 what? 304 hippos, monkeys or bananas? what's the unit? the unit here is 304 square meters square meters because you see when we do when we do the area when we do the area is meter times meter this is measured in meter and this is measured in meter meter times meter will yield meter squared that was it answer is 304 and again if you're curious about the percentile it was 30 percent 70% of people who took the exam missed it. <coughs> but it doesn't seem so bad, does it? What are we going to do tomorrow? As I said before, tomorrow we'll be start exam number 2, the first section on exam number 2, which appears on page number which appears on page number 481. Page 481 the very first section in the next exam is what we're going to pick up. What is where we're going to pick up tomorrow from? Okay. Bye now.